Good morning, YouTube. Tired Metal at Weatherman here. Hopefully, you guys are doing well. Last night, I meant to do a video, but apparently, uh, one of our neighbors decided to do some housework or of some kind because I was hearing drill bits for at least a couple of hours. I was trying to wait it out because it was hard to focus and it was getting really loud, honestly. Like, it was cutting through the mic really well, so I'm pretty sure you all didn't want to hear that, so I decided to spare you, but by the time they were done, it was almost 10 o'clock. So, I just decided it was probably better to just wait till the morning, hence here we are. That being said, we have a slight risk for severe weather towards the Ozarks. We've known this for a while. We also have a, a pretty significant winter system that's heading through uh, the Midwest right now. Going to be bringing big time snow towards western Nebraska. Some places could even see up to a foot. There could be a swath of about two to four inches throughout most of this region, heading up towards the Great Lakes throughout the day today. So we're going to cover this system right here, and we're just going to go from there. And uh, we'll start out by looking at our day one slight risk. I don't know why we're on day two, but here is what our slight risk is looking like a little bit of an extension up to the north we have a small portion of western kentucky and southeastern um, missouri involved mainly towards the little boot heel so to speak the uh, marginal risk stretches all the way into the ohio valley well into the tennessee valley now and we're dealing with the southern indiana and illinois involved in that as well now could see some activity even as far west as uh, Oklahoma, just to the east of Tulsa. And we have Dallas just on the fringe of that uh, line where we could see a marginal chance for severe weather. Other than that, the uh, borders haven't really extended with this uh, marginal risk here. Slight risk has changed a lot, too. But uh, the main threat's going to be damaging wind with this today. I don't see this really going up to an enhanced risk. The mid-latitude uh, temperatures are going to play a big part in that. Like if we look at a skew T chart, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. It's not a very abrupt change between uh, warm and cold. And that's what you would really need for a severe weather threat. Keep in mind, we do have a tornado threat ex that exists with this system. Especially, I'm thinking, towards the early morning hours. There's a, or mid-morning, or late morning hours, I should say. There's a chance that we could see a few discrete supercells out, out ahead of the main line that we're expecting to form later today. And with that will come the increased chance of tornadoes due to the uh, wind shear. And we'll go over all of that in just a minute. Also have to keep in mind that there could be a little bit of hail, especially further off to the west. Although this is still a marginal risk for hail. This isn't a high cape setup. So with lower cape, you're not going to be as quick to get those lapse rates that would be needed for hail but we'll still keep an eye on that as well so here's what we'll do starting out here we'll load the uh, latest H triple R why are we going to oh, OZ so we're gonna start out by looking at a couple of parameters we'll start out with the uh, mix layer cape just to show you how little we really have to work with here for severe weather event you usually want a thousand joules per kilogram out here we're barely making that mark with these storms early in the morning and throughout the day it just really kind of remains that way there's a couple blotches where we get up to about 1500 more than sufficient enough for uh, maybe some uh tornadic activity but i'd say it's relatively minimal there you go looking at uh looking at the probable hazard type tornado this is where we have the cape over a thousand and see here's this little red line right here this is the temperature contrast and once we get towards the mid levels it kind of levels out a little bit you kind of want it to be a little bit further back like this but it's a little bit more uh it's it's a little bit more uh, progressive i would say so as a result tornado threat isn't greater as a result of that so I guess in a sense that's good news, but if you were looking for a tornado threat, this would not be the day today, so to speak. But anyway, up over towards the south, that's when the cape values start to in increase a bit here. And then as time goes on, look at how uh, this pretty much starts to fall apart as we head into the uh, overnight hours. 
and into Thursday. So severe threat's going to be relatively minimal. When we uh, go ahead and take a look at the bulk wind shear, we're going to go to about a kilometer above the ground here. We look at the bulk shear, there's plenty of that, and I think that's what ultimately is going to keep the severe threat going in the early part of the day. With the uh, temperatures not being oppressive at the mid-levels and a lack of uh, instability, you have to have some factor that uh, overcomes all the rest, and the wind shear will definitely be it today. We have plenty of wind shear that's about 40 to about 30 to 40 knots. Some places getting up to about 45 knots over our severe weather area, especially the slight risk. And this is why the concern is mainly going to be damaging winds and tornadoes. As far as um, lapse rates are concerned, and this is going to be very telling of our hail threat. Not super duper impressive unless you get towards uh, East Texas here. And as this moves west, we, notice how quickly we lose those lapse rates. Now, like I've said before on this on this channel, um, as far as uh, these as far as these uh, lapse rates, if you aren't in an area that's risk, at risk of severe weather, you do not have to worry about it. It's the same as a low level jet. You can have a low level level jet of about 50 miles an hour, but your uh, weather's calm. Do not think you are getting a tornado. You will not. Only if you have a severe thunderstorm over your area that's capable of taking advantage of that. So, I don't want to hear anybody panicking saying, Oh no, I'm going to get tornadoes in my region all when I'm all the way over here in New Mexico where it's probably snowing. So, just thought I'd clarify that real quick. But notice how over our severe weather area, the lapse rates are not very impressive. We're getting sixes and sevens. You want a little bit, you want slightly higher lapse rates. So the hail threat's going to be a lot more minimal than the last system for sure. And then by the time this moves any further to the east, the severe threat's pretty much going to die out. It's pretty much been indicated the entire time. So now that we've uh, looked at our dynamics, let's go ahead and look at what our precipitation looks like. And we'll even uh, cover the snow a little bit too. So here we are taking a look at our precip map. Here's our moderate to heavy snow going on around this part of uh, western Nebraska here. This will be persisting throughout the day. Pretty much will be an all day thing. And it won't be till later tonight where that starts to clear out. And then the timeline for our severe storms will probably begin, I'd say, I'm trying to give a rough estimate here because I have to remember this is central time. So this will be about maybe 9, 10 o'clock is when we'll start seeing storms fire on my time. So about 9, 8 central. Things will really start to pick up once we get towards about 11 a.m. close to lunchtime. And this will only intensify as time goes on. This line will get, to, once this line really gets to the east of the Mississippi-Alabama border, things will start to kind of fall apart. This isn't a super robust storm as far as the severe side is set up because mainly that low is just so separated from uh, the other dynamics and that's where you need a lot of that forcing and that's where that uh, forcing comes into play I should say and ultimately this is going to limit storms from uh, really starting to blossom here we still will see some severe weather but I don't think this will be an overwhelming day and uh, the tornado threat should be relatively minimal Again, can't rule out any uh, embedded supercells and a few prefrontal cells, and that's what needs to be watched the most. But for the most part, I don't think we'll have a repeat of last week. Let's hope those aren't famous last words. So let's go ahead now and start comparing the uh, snowfall totals real quick. All right, so here we are taking a look at our uh, Couchier ratio here for the snowfall. It's the most accurate ratio to look at for snowfall. And, uh, of course, the bullseye for snow is going to be over Nebraska today. Some areas could see close to a foot, maybe a little bit more. I do think that this is a bit bold from the uh, Euro, but it wouldn't be too far out of reach. I think that once we get to the uh, shorter range models, like what we'll see here, up here, like the NAM 3 kilometer H triple R, oops. And that's that's will be that'll be a little bit more accurate, especially once we look at the National Weather Service's uh, blend of models. So that's what the euro is showing us. Oops, I did not want to click that. 
did not want to click that. So that's the uh, Euro. This is the Canadian. Showing a little bit something similar to the Euro and the GFS is actually the least aggressive of the three main global models, which is a bit surprising. But then again, when I think about it, the uh, both of these are a little bit out of date because this one only updates every 12 hours. This one hasn't made its update to the 060. So our 6 o'clock update isn't even in yet. So here's the HRRR, and we can see here, oops, we can see here that the bullseye is the same, but it's a lot more minute. I'm thinking that uh, there's, that something is a majorly uptick here, though, because there's increased snowfall potential right around the center of Nebraska. I wasn't seeing this last night, so I'm a little bit shocked by it, not going to lie. Same can be said across all the models, really. It seems like the bullseyes shifted a bit more so from uh, western Nebraska over towards uh, central Nebraska now. With there being even potential for two feet of snow. It's crazy. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the blender models. It's actually a very similar look. We also have... Uh, we have slightly lighter totals, but it's not far off from uh, two feet of snow. It's really just about a little over a foot still, but it's crazy to think that we have that much agreement. But in such a sh with uh, such a short time left before this occurs, it makes sense. Of course, widespread areas of two to four inches are possible. There's still a swath where we could see up to about six to eight inches throughout this region as well. And that's pretty much all we got for today. One last thing to make note of is the ice potential going to be staying under that quarter inch mark for sure we still could see areas that get up to about a tenth of an inch this is mainly going to be centered around southeastern nebraska maybe a part of um south central iowa and a little bit of kansas might get into this action too especially towards the northern parts but for the most part there's not a uh, significant ice threat with it this at this time this could change but most likely i think the ice threat is going to be relatively minimal snow is going to be the main story with this but all right this is the end of the video here if you liked anything i did drop me a like share the video to anyone that's in these regions let them know what's going on of course and of course if you haven't subscribed already definitely do so one year anniversary of the channel is about a couple months from now I would love to get up to 300 subs. I think it's possible. I'm always here doing videos, and that will never change. I got to run to work, though, right now, because I'm probably going to be running late. But anyway, this has been Tired Metalhead Weatherman. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.